Today is Tuesday, April 11th. We'll tell you about another mass shooting and what police are saying about the investigation so far. Also, why hundreds of executives say a controversial ruling over an abortion pill could end up impacting all medicines. Plus, a new warning about public phone charging stations, how some people got some free money from Google, and what new Star Wars projects are now in the works. Those stories and more news to know coming up. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Well, unfortunately, we have to start today with news of another mass shooting. At least five people were killed at a bank in downtown Louisville, Kentucky and at least eight others were rushed to the hospital. Police say the gunman worked at the bank and that yesterday morning he decided to go in with an assault-style weapon and attack his coworkers, streaming the whole rampage live on Instagram. But it didn't last long. Officers say they responded within three minutes of getting the call. When they got there, the gunman apparently opened fire, so they shot back and killed him. It's not clear what exactly motivated this man, but authorities say he acted alone. Officers have already removed bags of evidence from the shooter's home, hoping to learn more. And Instagram has since taken down the live stream. One of the Tennessee lawmakers who got expelled from the state house for leading a gun control protest is now going back to his job. Because of how the law works, it's up to county and city level officials to pick who replaces lawmakers once they're expelled. One was from the Nashville area. And a council there decided unanimously to pick the same state rep who got booted out last week to fill the role he had just been kicked out of. With that, he walked back up to the Capitol steps yesterday with hundreds of supporters alongside him who felt he should never have been expelled in the first place. He then took another oath of office. You'll remember another lawmaker was also voted out of the state legislature for that same gun control protest. A county commission will decide in a vote tomorrow whether to appoint him to his old seat as well. Then, no matter what that commission decides, both Democratic state reps will be able to run for re-election. The Republican House Majority Leader says he will welcome them back to the chamber if they're re-elected, but is asking them to follow protocol and instead of protesting, to make their voices heard with their votes as they were elected to do. To be continued. Backlash seems to be growing in response to a federal judge's controversial ruling in a case involving abortion pills. More than 400 leaders from some of the drug and biotech industry's most prominent investment firms and companies condemned the ruling this week. None of them are actually behind Mifepristone, which is used for abortions and miscarriage care. But they signed a statement over the judge's decision to stop sales of the pill. They worry the ruling could set a precedent, sparking challenges to other approved drugs that have nothing to do with abortion and fuel public distrust of the whole process. And they say it should not be up to a judge to make the call about the pill, since he doesn't have any scientific training. They called for the ruling to be reversed. And the Justice Department has also appealed. Remember, the judge ruled the FDA did not seriously consider legitimate safety questions about this abortion pill when it was approved 23 years ago. So the judge agreed with anti-abortion advocates who sued over it that Mifepristone should no longer be on the market. The drug is still available for now while this case works its way through the legal system, And this case is expected to eventually end up before the Supreme Court. President Biden is headed to Northern Ireland today. He's marking 25 years since a historic peace agreement was signed. It's known as the Good Friday Agreement, or GFA, or Belfast Agreement. No matter what you call it, it ended more than 30 years of violence between pro-Britain Protestants, who wanted to remain part of the UK, and pro-Ireland Catholics, who wanted Northern Ireland to reunite with the rest of Ireland. The deal started a power-sharing agreement that worked for a long time. Things are more peaceful, but a lot of the same disagreements still stand, especially in the wake of so-called Brexit when the UK left the European Union. Because of trade disputes, the Northern Ireland government is not even meeting right now. So President Biden will be reminding people about the ways in which the agreement did work in hopes it can keep working in the future. Biden will then go south to the parts of Ireland where his ancestors came from and talk more about the deep historic ties between the US and Ireland. All right, we have more news still coming up, but first, a quick break for our sponsor. Here on the show, we will be talking about Earth Day later this month. In fact, all of April is considered Earth Month, so it's a great time to be thinking about and talking about the simple ways we can all be more sustainable in our own lives, from sticking with reusable water bottles to bringing reusable bags to the grocery store to even buying from Rothy's when I need new shoes. 
Yes, I can buy new shoes knowing they were designed with the planet in mind, since they were made with Rothy's signature thread repurposed from single-use plastic bottles. And because Rothy's shoes and bags are durably designed, they can stay in my closet longer. I can even pop them in the washing machine if they need a refresh. Plus, my Rothy's shoes are chic and comfortable, and they can be worn with so many different outfits, dressy or casual. If you're looking to re-energize your spring wardrobe, you can feel good about buying and wearing Rothy's. And I love all the options. Rothy's has vibrant shoes and bags in a range of bright hues. For stylish and sustainable shoes, shop Rothy's. Get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash newsworthy. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S, rothys.com slash newsworthy. The White House is working on a new initiative to improve COVID-19 vaccines. It just launched a $5 billion program called Project Next Gen that has three main goals. One, develop a nasal vaccine to hopefully prevent most COVID-19 infections, not just severe disease. Two, develop longer-lasting vaccines. And three, create broader vaccines that can protect against all variants of the virus that causes COVID-19, as well as different types of coronaviruses. There's also funding to develop more durable antibody treatments. But for now, there aren't any set timetables for when the products might actually be available. Some of the lab work is already underway, and the government has started looking for private sector partners to speed up the process. Project Next Gen is actually a follow-up to Operation Warp Speed that launched during the Trump White House. That one spent about $30 billion in 2020 to develop, manufacture, and distribute the first COVID-19 vaccines that are still in the market now and still considered effective. So you might want to think twice before plugging into a free public charging station for your device. Public USB ports are pretty common these days at airports, hotels, or shopping centers, and can be pretty convenient. But the FBI is now saying you should know the risks. Criminals have managed to hijack those public USB ports to get access to other people's phones, tablets, or computers. They've been able to export personal data and passwords, and in some cases, have sold that information to other cyber criminals. So the FBI suggests carrying your own charger and USB cord, and if you need to charge, use an electrical outlet instead of a public charging station with USB ports. Or you can carry a portable charger or external battery. One more piece of advice from the FBI, Try to avoid buying anything online while using public Wi-Fi networks, since that's another way hackers have been able to get in. For the first time, the FTC took action in a case of so-called review hijacking. So that's when a marketer uses customer reviews from another product to boost the sales of its own. This case involved a supplements retailer called The Bountiful Company. It makes Nature's Bounty Vitamins and other brands. Well, the FTC says it deceived customers on Amazon by merging reviews of different products to make some look like they had better ratings and reviews than they would have if they had their own individual listings. It's a feature Amazon actually offers for when products are really similar, like a bottle with 50 pills in it versus 100 pills. Or you might see reviews for the same product in different colors. As long as it's really the same thing, it's okay. But the FTC says the Bountiful Company used the feature on newer products with different formulations than their older ones. So it's fining the company $600,000. Bountiful says it settled to avoid a costly legal challenge, but does not admit any wrongdoing. It says, quote, consumers were neither deceived nor harmed, and the company says it just wanted to help people find similar products. Amazon says it's going to keep working with enforcement agencies and monitoring the platform itself for fake reviews. If you use Google Pay, you may be in for a pleasant surprise. Google accidentally added free money to user accounts recently. And in some cases, it's letting people keep it. Ars Technica reports the deposits range from just 10 bucks to more than $1,000. And some people say they got paid more than once. Google says in some instances, it was able to reverse the deposits, but it was not able to do that in all cases. So now, if the extra money is still in your account or if you've already spent it, it's yours. It's been more than 45 years since the first Star Wars movie came out, and it seems the franchise is still nowhere near finished. The 2023 Star Wars celebration wrapped up in London this week, where three new movies were announced. The film studio behind them says all three are now pretty far along in development, with big-name directors and even some old characters. For example, Daisy Ridley is reprising her role as Rey. One of the movies will be set 25,000 years before anything in the Star Wars universe to date. Another will be set 15 years after the most recent movie that came out in 2019. 
If you're a fan of the original Star Wars movies, there's something for you to look forward to as well. Star Wars Episode VI, Return of the Jedi, is heading back to theaters this month. It's meant to give fans the opportunity to celebrate ahead of the movie's 40th anniversary. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Trivia Tuesday, when we ask a different trivia question every week. But first, a quick thank you to all of our newsworthy insiders. We have some new insiders this week, like Christine S. Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, our other recent and longtime supporters, we are so grateful for you and your monthly support of the show. You help to ensure we are able to bring you fast, fair, fun news, no matter what happens with our sponsors. And stay tuned for the Ask Me Anything bonus episode that's coming out later this month. If you're not yet an insider and you want access to bonus episodes and ad-free daily news, you can join us at thenewsworthy.com slash insider. Sign up for a free trial with just a few clicks and get immediate access. That's thenewsworthy.com slash insider or find the link in our episode notes. Okay, now back to Trivia Tuesday. Today's trivia question is, what country has the most natural lakes? You can play along with us in our weekly roundup email that comes out each Friday. Simply sign up to get it at thenewsworthy.com slash email or find the link in today's episode notes. As for last week's trivia question, what president was a licensed bartender? The answer is Abraham Lincoln. Yep, he actually co-owned a business with a friend named William F. Barry called Barry and Lincoln. It served as both a store and a bar that sold brandy, wine, and whiskey. But reports say that business didn't do so well, and Lincoln actually fell into debt that he didn't fully pay off until he became a congressman. By the way, Lincoln wasn't the only president to have an unconventional job or two on his way to politics. Andrew Johnson was a tailor. Grover Cleveland was an executioner. Calvin Coolidge was a toy maker. Lyndon B. Johnson worked as a shoe shiner and goat herder. And Gerald Ford was a park ranger and fashion model. Well, thank you so much for listening today and for sharing the show if you found it valuable. We'll be back with another news roundup tomorrow. Until then, have a wonderful day.